The angel Gabriel gave Mary some startling news. Mary was to be the mother of the Messiah. By God's grace, she would conceive in her womb and give birth to the very Son of God. We read in Luke 1, beginning at verse 30, And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor or grace with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Well, Mary knew what was going to happen, but she did not know how it was going to happen. And therefore she asks in verse 34, Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? Now Mary's question was not born out of unbelief, as was the response of Zacharias back in verse 18. When the angel told Zacharias that his wife would be bearing a son, the priest said, How shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. Well, he was struck dumb because of his unbelief, according to verse 20, Because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. Now Mary knew that God could do the impossible, but how would he enable her to conceive when she was not yet married? And more than that, how could a mother who admitted that she needed a Savior give birth to the sinless Son of God? Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? asked Job 14, verse 4. And the answer is given, not one. And in Job 25, 4, the question is asked, How can he be clean that is born of a woman? Now that was Mary's concern. How would God bring about this wonderful birth of the sinless Son of God? Well, Gabriel gave to Mary a threefold answer to her question. And as we consider this threefold answer, I think it's going to encourage us to face the impossible and trust God. I don't know what you're facing today. You may have a physical problem or an emotional problem. There might be something in the family or something in your finances, your business. Perhaps you are discouraged with the ministry at the church. I don't know. But I want you to know as we study the Word of God today, our God is the God of the impossible. First, in verse 35, Gabriel gave to Mary a word of enlightenment, a word of explanation. The angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Spirit shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. You see, he enlightens her and tells her exactly how God is going to perform this miracle. Would you notice that not one word is said about Joseph? Mary was engaged to Joseph among the Jews at that time. Engagement was the next thing to marriage. I mean, you did not break an engagement except by divorce. And if an engaged girl was found unfaithful to her fiancé, it was treated like adultery. And so Mary is wondering how this can be done. And the angel says, it's not going to be through Joseph. It's going to be through the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Now, this is the miracle of the virgin birth, the virgin conception and birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. This was predicted back in the Old Testament in Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14. In fact, when God explained all of this to Joseph some three months later, this is what he said, Matthew chapter 1. Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins." Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, and here's Isaiah 7, 14, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. You see, the angel says that uh, what is born is going to be holy. Now the word holy 
means set apart, special, unique, belonging to God. In this case, it means sinless, the sinless Son of God. 1 Peter 2.22 informs us that Jesus did no sin. That's an interesting statement. In order to do no sin, you must have no sin in you, and that's what we find out in 1 John 3, 5. 1 John 3, 5 states that in him is no sin. And this is why he did no sin, 1 Peter 2, 22. In fact, 2 Corinthians 5, 21 underscores this by saying he knew no sin. That is, he never experienced it. Now, of course, he knew what sin was, being God, and he knew what sin did. In fact, he knows far better than we do, for he can see the end from the beginning. But Jesus Christ, when he was born, is that holy thing, the Son of God. Now, the key word here is the word overshadowed. And the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. This is the same word that is used in Exodus chapter 40, verse 35, talking about the tabernacle. Let me read it to you. I'll begin with verse 34 of Exodus 40. Then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation, because the cloud abode thereon, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Now, in the Greek translation of the Old Testament, the word abode in verse 35 of Exodus 40 is the same as the word overshadow in verse 35 of Luke chapter 1. It's the Greek word uh, episkiazo, which means to overshadow. It's a picture of the Shekinah glory settling down in the Holy of Holies in the tabernacle. In other words, Mary's body became the very temple of God, and the glory of God overshadowed her, and the power of God performed a miracle, and Jesus was conceived in her virgin womb. This word overshadow is the same word used in Matthew, Mark, and Luke describing the cloud at the transfiguration where the cloud overshadowed them as they were there on the mount with the Lord Jesus. Now you and I live under the shadow of the Almighty. We live in the Holy of Holies. If you are a Christian, God has overshadowed you. More than that, God lives in you by the power of His Holy Spirit and the presence of His Holy Spirit. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. In Hebrews 10, 5, the Lord Jesus says, A body hast thou prepared me. This was done by the Holy Spirit of God. You see, Adam was given a body directly by God, without a man or a woman. Eve got her body from the man. But Cain and Abel got their bodies from a man and a woman. The Lord Jesus got his body through a woman, through the power of the Holy Spirit, without the intervention of the man. God prepared a body for his son. Well, a word of enlightenment. Then in verse 36, there's a word of encouragement. And behold, thy cousin or thy relative Elizabeth hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. You'll recall that Elizabeth had been hiding herself for five months, according to verse 24. Now, apparently Mary didn't know about this. Um, Elizabeth knew about it, and uh, Zacharias, of course, knew about it, but Mary didn't know about it. It's likely that uh, Elizabeth and Zacharias lived about a hundred miles away from Nazareth, probably in the priestly town of Hebron. Now, we aren't told specifically, but many Bible students believe that they were living in Hebron. And so uh, Mary had no way of knowing what was happening to Elizabeth, and uh, now she gets the good news that her aged relative, this word cousin in the Greek means uh, any kind of a relative, uh, her aged relative was going to give birth in her old age to a son. Now, this is a remarkable thing. It's a word of encouragement. It's as though the angel is saying, Now, Mary, God is able to do anything. Now, John the Baptist, of course, was born naturally through the begetting of the father, the conception of the mother. 
Uh, Jesus was not born that same way. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit of God. But the point he's making is simply this. God is working out his plan. God has a timetable. God is going to accomplish his purposes. And God is able to do not only the difficult, but the impossible. John the Baptist himself admitted that the Lord Jesus Christ was sinless when Jesus came to be baptized. John said, I have need to be baptized of you, and do you come to me? John the Baptist recognized that uh, though John was born miraculously, it was nothing like the birth of the Lord Jesus. The birth of the Lord Jesus was unique. Verse 36 gives us a word of encouragement. I get encouraged when I hear of what God is doing for other people. When I hear of what God is doing in other radio ministries, some of my friends who share the word of God on the radio, it encourages me, it blesses me to know how God is using his word to accomplish his purposes. So there's a word of enlightenment in verse 35, and there's a word of encouragement in verse 36. That's why we need one another. That's why you and I must go to the house of God and fellowship with the people of God. We need the encouragement to know what God is doing in the lives of others. Finally, there's a word of enablement. Verse 37, For with God nothing shall be impossible. Uh, earlier in the broadcast, our good news singer sang that song that means so much to us here at Back to the Bible broadcast, Nothing is Impossible. Well, this is a good testimony, isn't it? For with God, nothing shall be impossible. God said that to Abraham back in Genesis chapter 18 and verse 14, when God announced to Abraham that uh, Sarah was going to have a son. And like Elizabeth, Sarah was old and beyond the years of bearing. Genesis 18, 14, Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Is anything too hard for the Lord? The answer is no. Nothing is too hard for the Lord. In Numbers 11:23, the Lord said to Moses, Is the Lord's hand waxed short? Thou shalt see now whether my word shall come to pass unto thee or not. So God said to Abraham, I can do the impossible. God said to Moses, My hand is not paralyzed or shortened. Remember what we read in Job 42? Job learned a good lesson, didn't he? Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything, and that no thought can be withholden from thee. Now, I like these testimonies. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Is the Lord's hand waxed short? I know that thou canst do everything. And then there's Jeremiah's testimony in Jeremiah 32, 17. Ah, Lord, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. I don't know what you're facing today, but you better lay hold of that. Jeremiah 32, 17. His arm is not shortened, it's stretched out, and there is nothing too hard for thee. Our Lord Jesus has the same message in Matthew chapter 19 and verse 26. With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. There is a translation of Luke 137 that really excites me. For no word of God shall be void of power. For with God nothing shall be impossible. Why? Because his word has power. And when he says something, it is accomplished. And so he gives her a word of enablement. How is God going to do this? By his word. How did he bring about creation? Through his word. How did he bring about the birth of the Lord Jesus? The power of the Holy Spirit fulfilling the word of God. How did Mary respond to all of this? The angel gave her a word of enlightenment and a word of encouragement and then a word of enablement. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. That word handmaid means slave, the lowest kind of slave. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to 
thy word. She believed the word of God, and the instant she believed the word of God, the miracle took place in her life. And she became a part of a miracle. You know, you can make your life a miracle just by believing the Word of God. God comes to you and says, you're facing the impossible. I am the one who majors on the impossible. Now look, just trust my Word. Surrender yourself totally to me, and I will accomplish my purposes. Well, Mary received the grace of God, and Mary believed the Word of God, and Mary yielded her body to the Spirit of God. And the next thing we're going to find is Mary singing a song of praise to the glory of God. Thank you for listening to Back to the Bible. Join us again tomorrow. God bless you.